Have you ever been just so mad that you had to do something about it? I know it happens a lot in family life. Toddler on the floor just losing his mind, right? Didn't get what he wanted. Of course, parents, we, we've been known to throw our tirades against teenagers. You know, just, we cannot sit idly by and not say something. You know, and so we do. But my question is, is even bigger. Something in the world isn't right. And you just cannot sit by any longer. You need to do something physical about it. Now, I, I cannot say that I would ever uh, be brave enough really to do anything too big. You know, I've, I've never been part of a, a protest march, a sit-in, or any kind of civil disobedience or something I just was passionate about. And I know this past week, this was the 50-year anniversary of Selma, Alabama and the big march and what happened down there. And, you know, I, I, I'd have to admit, I, I would be pretty squeamish against police in riot gear. All right. And I, I'm just not so sure how morally comfortable I would be if the mob decided we're just going to turn over some cars, and we're going to start fires, and we're going to loot businesses. I, I don't know. I, I just, I would be walking away at that point. You know, but you see this kind of thing on television quite regularly, you know, all over the world. People just have had enough and they're, they're taken to the streets. And, and our, our, our latest example would be, you know, what's happening in Ferguson, Missouri. You know, people took to the streets. We're not going to take it anymore. And, and I, to be honest, I just, at first I really had trouble placing myself in their shoes. You know, why the outrage against the police? I mean, they're, they're there to... To serve and protect, they've been called by God to do this good service in the community. Of course, now we know a little bit more of the story. You know, we, after the Justice Department's review and now their report, we, we learned that it's just been years and years of abuse in that community and in which the, the, they were enriching themselves off of the community by pulling them over and giving them citations. And it, it affected the poor the, the most and had devastating effects for those who could not pay even a simple parking fine or a light was out on the taillight. And, and not being able to pay your fine, then you get a bigger fine. And not paying your bigger fine, you then go to prison over a parking fine that you and I could just take care of. Obviously, there was a wrong that needed to be righted. My question is, how? What are the appropriate means? And who is the one to do it? Those questions are not as easily answered as you might just first assume, especially as you look at what Jesus did today in the Gospel of John. As we look at that Gospel... We see the context that here in Jerusalem, it's Passover. Jesus and his disciples are there, which means at that time in the city, it would be completely filled to the brim with religious faithful who have come to the one place on earth that was prescribed by God that you could legally sacrifice your lamb for the Passover meal. It had to be at the temple, and it had to be a perfect lamb without sacrifice or blemishes or defects. That, that posed a real logistical challenge for the religious pilgrims who had to travel a long way. Think of it, how would you get a live animal without a cage, without your truck, without transportation. You'd have to walk this animal the whole distance. And if it should happen to stumble on some rocks and bloody its knee, it's no longer good. It's, it's not acceptable as a sacrifice. As you tie it up for the night and you have to get some sleep, uh, the wolves come in and snag it. 
you're without your lamb. Or you finally do make it to the temple and, and it's, it's for all purposes in your mind, it's, this is a good lamb. And yet when the priest takes a, a good look at the lamb, he rejects your lamb. Now this isn't just, oh, too bad for you. No, now you miss out on a holiday that is as big as Christmas, that is as religiously significant as Easter, as the people would gather with their families to share this Passover meal, as they would then teach their young the story of God's great deliverance out of slavery, out of bondage from Egypt, how he has gathered them to himself, how we are a people, we have a God. You would miss out completely on this event. And so, as a nice convenience to all the religious pilgrims coming, the temple provided lambs for sacrifice and other sacrificial animals. And you wouldn't have the transportation problem. You just simply go from the courts to the sacrificial altar. Done. And you already know they accept it. They're the ones providing it. Now, of course, you go to a convenience store and you pay a premium for that convenience. How much more for this once a year sacrificial offering that you didn't have to do anything for except pay money. And it came at a very steep price. And since you do live in a different country or a different city, they had all different kinds of currency. You have to have the correct currency. And so the money changers are there to help you out. This is all sanctioned by the church. It's sanctioned by the community. It's to help the religious pilgrims so that they can worship. And it all was working like a well-oiled machine. And just as Wichita is the air capital of the world because of all of our aircraft industry, well, in Jerusalem, the main economic engine was the temple and the sacrificial animals and system all that supported what was going on for the pilgrims. And it was a system that worked without flaw if you had the money. But in this economy at that time, there were many, many more people that were not able to pay that price for a lamb. That were not able to have their money exchanged and pay for all that supported that industry. And so they would be left out. But there were so many who could pay that it really didn't matter to those in charge. They were profiting off the people, and it was the poor who were hurt the most. This was a wrong that needed to be righted. But how? What are the acceptable means? And who would do it? Jesus himself would answer each and every one of these questions as he made for himself a, a whip out of cords and he drove the, the oxen and the, the lambs and he drove all the sacrificial animals out. He told those with, <clears throat> with the pigeons, get these out of here. And there, as Jesus clears the temple of the money exchangers in a very violent and angry and passionate way. There was a disruption of legal business. There was a destruction of property. What in the world is the sinless Son of God doing as He clears the temple? Well, as we consider what Jesus did, we have to also keep in mind what He did not do. He did not call to His disciples and say, let's burn the city. They didn't go into the mall and downtown district and, and turn over the carts and he didn't set fire to the town. In fact, not one of his disciples was allowed to join him in clearing the temple. It was Jesus and Jesus alone who had the authority to do this. He is the Father's Son after all. He is the one who has zeal for his own house. The question remains, though, of his means, the violence, the destruction. As we consider what Jesus did, 
we, can, we keep in mind who he is. He is the Father's Son. And this would be verified by his death and his resurrection. This is his Father's house. It would be no different if you went home today and you found in your front yard and in your side yards and in your backyard that the entire community had gotten together and put up a flea market in your yard. And there were so many vendors and products. There were so many customers and clients and people streaming to your house to shop in your yard that when the school bus stopped that afternoon to let your children out, your own children were unable to make it into the house because of the throngs of people buying and selling. You had some relatives coming in from, from a, a different state and as they get even close to the house, they, they can't even find a place to park, let alone ability to get to your house and dine at your table. As a homeowner, what do you do? You as a homeowner, you go out and you start telling people, you got to leave. This is my house. This is my yard. You can't be doing this here. My children cannot even get into my house. My family cannot get here. And so you start picking up stuff, right? And you start moving stuff. And you start tipping over the registers because they're not listening to you. And you get the job done because you care about your family. You want your children to be able to get home. You want your, your relatives to be able to dine with you. Now that makes perfect sense. The means for the proper person, the owner of the house. It is Jesus who clears his father's house. It is Jesus who has this great passion and zeal. Now think about this for a moment. There were children of God who could not come into the house. The poor were being left out and neglected. This was to be a time in which the entire community came together to celebrate that we have a God who has delivered us all. It was to be a time of great generosity and justice and mercy to one another so that everybody had everything that they needed so that we together as the family can be with our God, our Father in His house. Jesus makes that possible. We don't have to go to Jerusalem anymore, and if you did, you wouldn't find the temple. You would find a mosque. You would find the Dome of the Rock over there, a Muslim worship place, and you wouldn't even be able to get in. Where is the temple today? Where is the place where the Father has a house and He dwells with His children? You. You're that temple. You're that place, the home that God has come to dwell. And Jesus, Jesus Himself is the one and the only one who can cleanse the temple. He is the one who in his death and resurrection provides the pure heart, the forgiveness of sins, the welcome into the family table. And now, you and I are very different when Jesus has come to cleanse and to remove all that would stop his children from coming. You think about it, what would really fix the problems in Ferguson? What would really fix the problems in all the countries with the riots? What would really fix the problem in your house and in your life? It's not going to be an investigation by the federal government. It's not going to be with new rules or new laws. The only thing that will truly change us is the one whose house it is. Jesus. And as Jesus comes and cleans us, we truly are a different kind of people. And that now my God-given calling, no matter what it is, policeman, mayor, teacher, business owner, father, mother, no matter what it is, 
What are my God-given calling I will now, by the grace of God and the love of God and the change of God in my heart, do my God-given responsibility with justice and mercy and love and goodness so that all of God's children are now brought into a place where they are welcome and they're cared for and they're loved because I am the temple. You are the temple where Jesus resides and lives and reigns. May the Lord bless you as you leave this place to be his presence in our community. Amen.